what you want to know, aside from the food sources, you want to know how do we absorb vitamin A. So let's talk about its absorption. It is a fat. Remember this. So when we're talking about absorption, we do best if we have a healthy gallbladder because it is a fat. Remember the gallbladder stores bile. Your liver produces bile. That bile is then stored in the gallbladder and then it's released into your small intestine where it emulsifies fat. What does that mean? It makes fat. I don't know if you've ever done this experiment when you were a kid in school, in grade school, where you took a cup and you poured water in the cup and then you poured fat or oil in the cup, like olive oil or vegetable oil, and you watched them separate. Like if you let it sit there long enough, the oil will separate out on the top the water will separate out on the bottom. It's because the water um, is, 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 is not fat soluble and the fat, the oil is not water soluble. So they split, they separate out. And so what emulsification does is it takes the fat, the vitamin A, and it, and it surrounds it so that it can become water soluble so that you can absorb it more effectively, more efficiently into your bloodstream. So you wanna, if you don't have a functioning gallbladder, right? If you are, if maybe you've had your gallbladder removed, maybe you have um, a long history or a long-standing history of severe gluten sensitivity where you have fat malabsorption, a disease like celiac disease where you're malabsorbing fat. This is, those of you who have these issues, those of you that, that are struggling with these types of problems are going to be culprits for the potential for developing vitamin A deficiency. So if you don't have a functional gallbladder, if you have a history of fat malabsorption, you know, this could be part of your problem is that a vitamin A deficiency can develop. Now, the, I said earlier that vitamin A is critical for gut function. Let's talk about why that is. So if we, if we need to convert a fat into water through the gallbladder's bile, okay, to get absorption, then what does vitamin A actually do once it's in our body, once it's in our system? Well, one of the things vitamin A does is it helps to regenerate epithelial tissue. Now, what the heck does epithelial tissue mean? So it regenerates Okay, what is epithelial tissue? Epithelial tissue is a type of tissue that covers or lines something. So for example, what are the different types of epithelial tissue? Your skin is epithelial tissue. So healthy skin requires vitamin A. Your urinary tract We'll abbreviate that. Your UT, your urinary tract requires epithelial tissue. So you need vitamin A for a healthy urinary tract. Your lungs require vitamin A. Your GI lining. So you hear all these people talking about glutamine and leaky gut. You very rarely do you hear anybody mention vitamin A, but vitamin A is one of the most crucial nutrients for regenerating epithelial tissue. So let's say you've got a disease of inflammation in your GI tract, in your smaller, in your large intestine. In order for that tissue, first you gotta put the fire out, but then that tissue has to be regenerated. But in order for that tissue to regenerate, that requires vitamin A. So without vitamin A, it's gonna be really, really, you're gonna have a hard pressed, hard time to do that. So regener regeneration of epithelial tissues, the skin, the urinary tract, the lungs, and the GI lining are some of the most critical uh, epithelial tissues in the body. Remember too, the blood brain barrier is a type of barrier tissue as well. So these are all crucial and vitamin A plays a role in those areas, in those arenas. And without it, you can develop, there are a number of different diseases for the skin you can develop. And somebody was asking me this question a couple weeks ago, uh, hyperfollicular keratosis, like, or, or, uh, it's basically, it's the little bumps, the fine bumps that can form because your skin is hyperkeratinizing on the back of the arms. This is where it's most common, the back of the arm right here in the upper arm and the back of the lower leg, that can occur. So if you've got a lot of bumps as you run your arm, those bumps are kind of red and inflamed looking. Vitamin A is one of the deficiencies that actually can create that. It's one of the diseases linked to it. Now, skin inflammation in general and slow healing of the skin can occur with vitamin A deficiency as well. Chronic urinary tract infections. If you struggle with repetitive urinary tract infections, if you have um, kind of mysterious blood coming out every time you go give a urine catch and your doctor's like, we don't know why it's happening, um, that could be a potential for vitamin A deficiency. So 
the lungs, remember part of what vitamin A does is it helps form the mucus lining. So your lungs are coated by a protective mucus because when you breathe, you breathe in pollutants. And many of those pollutants, your lung has to deal with. Your lung has antioxidant systems that it, that it uses to try to help deal with that. So if you're not producing that mucus and those antibodies within that mucus, then you predispose yourself to chronic upper respiratory infections, colds, flus, influenza. This is why vitamin A, and you heard me talk last week about the immune system. You heard me talk about using vitamin A as an immune boosting agent to support immune function. And this is one of the reasons why. And in the same thing in the GI lining, remember your GI lining produces a layer of mucus. There's specialized cells in the gut called goblet cells that secrete mucus. And inside that mucus, there are antibodies and that requires vitamin A. You need vitamin A to be able to do that. So it's, it goes above and beyond just thinking about the barrier, but it's the mucus and where the mucus is produced and what the mucus serves to do, which is a physical barrier with antibodies intact. You make that same thing in your sinus cavities. So if you think about the muc mucosal lining in, in, your, in your mouth and in your sinus cavities to protect you from colds and flus and other bugs that you might breathe in through your nose or breathe in through your mouth, like this is where vitamin A shines. And this is why vitamin A is so critical for our immune system function. Because again, you think about these three things, these are internal immune system. Like these are parts of our body that are folded inward in their internal immune system, but your skin is your outward immune system. And a lot of people talk about 70 to 80% of the immune system resides behind the gut wall, but your skin is actually the first immune barrier that you have and your skin's integrity is dependent upon vitamin A and breach in skin integrity can allow for microbes and other pathogens to breach directly into your bloodstream and bypass the force of your immune system in your gut. So remember, penetrance through the skin, uh, if the skin lining is inflamed and not healthy, is a bad thing. We don't want that. So vitamin A is very, very crucial. Hey, and if you missed the earlier part of this series, click right here so you can go back and get caught up. The information there might be critical to helping you on your path to better health. And as always, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe for updates below. Have a great day.